Hello, guys, and welcome to the Transparency. Yes, as promised, a double dose of Truth and Transparency today. This is your intro episode to Jared Bridingham's case. Um, a lot of everything that was going on in this investigation was kept very close to the chest. Um of law enforcement in Jacksonville, as well as, you know, DA, Melissa Nelson. So, but January 25th, 2023, and then just a couple of days ago, there was um, two arrests. So one happened at the end of January, 2023, and one just happened a couple of days ago. This murder for hire it happened on February 16th, 2022. So again, welcome everybody. I wanted to push this back because I wanted to make sure that I gave it the um, the video that it deserved for the intro. Um, I am well rested. Thank you guys for asking. My birthday was amazing. It's been an amazing month. Um, so I think it's going to be a great year as well. So I want to give a shout out to all the members that are in here. Thank you for your guys' support, um, both by being here and financially. Uh, it means the world. And um, the subscribers, same thing. And then anybody that is new, welcome to the channel, Choosing Transparency. I've done a lot of work with the Idaho 4 case. I've done a lot of work in Pennsylvania. Uh, Rachel Altondo, Sheldon Jr., Jr., um, to work with the Lindsay Pardon case in Ohio. Started up a nonprofit in um, March of 2021, Fight for a Family. So just a quick little. Again, so hello to everybody. I'll let those notifications click in. Anybody know what this area code is? Nasty. The dirty, dirty. <clears throat> I'll also tell you I got my hands on some documents, so I'll be sharing those with you guys as well. Also, I'll be talking a little bit about um, Gannon. So, and then later this evening, you guys can catch me with the Idaho 4. <clears throat> My voice is extra raspy because of uh, the weekend, so. Glad you had a breast. Thank you there, Marsha. That was a uh, much needed laugh there <laughs> by I'm sure all that was watching in live chat. Again, if you're new, there is a way that you can chat while this is happening. All that we ever ask is that you be uh, kind to one another. You can always have differences of opinion. Um, I don't expect anybody to always have the same opinion. And in fact, usually when everybody does, that means someone's lying. So have your opinions, have your thoughts. All that I ever ask for is that they are done um, respectfully for uh, and towards other people. All right. Lana is great. We love you. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, all right, well, let's uh, go ahead and do this. Again, there's a pre-record about 12 minutes, and um, then we'll jump into some of the intro with uh, how we're going to go about this case. And um, thoughts and prayers with uh, everybody that is involved in this case, uh, all the way down to law enforcement, uh, victims, potential victims, And that would include the uh, family members of anybody that would be arrested um, that had nothing to do with things that their family members have ever done, you know? So, <clears throat> all right, here we go. This is your intro video. Let me know what you think. Use your uh, thumbs. Slap the thumbs up or thumbs down on, uh, on this video when you're done here today. Good 
morning. Thank you for being here today. My name is Gene Paul Smith, and I'm the Chief of Police, Jacksonville Beach Police Department. I'm joined by several men and women from our agency. State Attorney Melissa Nelson and members of the Bridegan family who have waited for this day for almost a year. On February 16, 2022, Jared Bridegan was driving home from a planned date night with his children. On Wednesday nights, Jared would take his nine-year-old twins to dinner with their two-year-old half-sister. He had just dropped off his twins at their mother's home and was driving to his own home on a dark area of Sanctuary Boulevard here in Jacksonville Beach. Jared came upon a tire blocking his route of travel. That tire was purposely placed there to make him stop. After putting on his hazard lights and placing his car in park, he opened his door in to presumably move the tire out of the road. It was then that he was gunned down in cold blood. Nothing was stolen from him. His two-year-old daughter remained strapped in the car seat in the back. This was a planned and targeted ambush and murder. The ruthless homicide has pained our community, and of course, Kirsten and Adam who are here with us today, along with their brother Justin, and the rest of Jared's family and friends who mourn his death. For almost a year, we have investigated this case, seeking the many questions surrounding Jared's murder, and most importantly, to answer the question, who killed Jared? Just under an hour ago, this man, Henry Tennant, was arrested for the following crimes. Conspiracy to commit murder. Second degree, second degree murder with a weapon. Accessory after the fact to a capital felony and child abuse. All directly related protection. to the murder Arrest, of trial, Jared. Punishment, contrary to the provision. In just a moment, State Attorney Nelson will speak briefly about the charges and what's next for Tim. However, I will say one additional thing beforehand. We ask for the community's help at the outset of this crime, and I want to personally thank everyone who has come forward to offer even the smallest bit of information. We ask for your help to identify a dark-colored F-150 Ford pickup spotted around the crime scene at the time of the shooting. And we sought information about the tire planted in a road that stopped Jared. Thank you again to everyone who stepped up. It was very helpful. We hope to have more answers to provide to you, even if not, it cannot be today. And with that, State Attorney Nelson will go into the charges and the next steps. Thank you, Chief. Let me begin by thanking all of the media who has followed this case since its inception. And Kirsten, Adam, your wife Carly, your brother Justin. I know this wait has not been easy, but as I just told you, I can attest firsthand to the level of commitment that this department, the Jacksonville Beach Police Department, ATF, and our prosecution team at the State Attorney's Office has devoted to this investigation. Today, we have decided to share limited information about the state's evidence against Henry Tennant. In order to protect the integrity of this ongoing an active investigation, the state has obtained a court order sealing Tennant's arrest warrant and affidavit for the next 30 days. However, I will briefly discuss the four crimes for which Tennant has been arrested. Conspiracy to commit murder. We know Henry Tennant did not act alone. Conspiracy to commit murder is a first degree felony, punishable by up to 30 years in prison. Accessory after the fact to a capital felony. This charge is based on Henry Tennant's actions in the days after Jared's murder. This crime is also a first degree felony, punishable by up to 30 years in prison. Child abuse. This charge stems from the fact that Kirsten and Jared's then two-year-old daughter was directly in harm's way when her father was shot and killed in front of her. This is a third degree felony, punishable by up to five years in prison. Second degree murder. This crime is a first degree 
felony punishable by up to life in prison and due to Henry Tennant's participation in the murder of Jared Breidigan. Tennant will have his first appearance in court tomorrow morning. Thereafter, we will present his case to a grand jury in order to seek an indictment for first degree murder. This, of course, will carry a punishment of mandatory life in prison. Thank you, State Attorney Nelson. Five months after Jared's murder, and roughly the same before that press conference, Jared's ex-wife finally broke her silence. Tabloids have cast suspicion on his ex-wife, Shanna Gardner. Those tabloids followed and photographed her and questioned her innocence. And Gardner has not spoken publicly to anyone about Breidigan's murder until now. And tonight, in the only TV interview she says that she will be doing, Action News Jack's Kristen Reary has the exclusive interview with Gardner. As her innocence has come into question, Shanna Gardner spoke to me in the only TV interview she says she'll be doing to tell her side of the story. I do want people to understand you know, where I'm coming from. Almost five months after Jared Brightigan was murdered in the street in front of his two-year-old daughter, we spoke with his ex-wife, who has not commented publicly so far. Our first question, why have you stayed silent? I was asked to not talk to the media or give a public statement, but with the level of speculation, I felt that now it was necessary to, to speak out. Shanna Gardner revealed she was asked by Jared Breidigan's widow, Kirsten, not to speak publicly, but we wanted to know how the relationship could have gotten to that point. I'm sure they, you would say that we've had happy moments. I mean, we shared the two most beautiful children in the world. In 2015, Jared and Shanna divorced. Their court records, which we obtained from the St. Johns County court system, revealed a long, complicated process lasting over five years. Anytime divorce comes into any situation, it's messy. It just is. I will say that I think that we both love our kids. Jared and Shanna both wanted full custody. The court file details allegations of spying, deceit, and more. In the end, Shanna and Jared reached an agreement. They shared custody, and whenever the children were at one parent's house, the other would come over Wednesday and have a date night. That's exactly what Jared and his twins did the night he was killed. It was actually one of the, one of the things, I'm sorry. Um, I remember my son tucking him in and him saying that it was a good date night. But that happiness would end just minutes after leaving Shanna's house just over two miles from her home. In a quiet neighborhood with few security cameras, a tire was rolled out into the street. Jared got out of his car to move it and was shot dead. His two-year-old daughter sat in the car, strapped into her car seat alone for three minutes before someone came to help. I was shocked. Um, I fell to the floor because I was devastated um, for what I was gonna have to tell my kids. Jared died in that street, leaving behind four children and a heartbroken family. They were, I think, in shock. Later, in a blog post, Shanna's mother said she was not invited to the funeral. I asked Shanna about the situation. His family did not invite me or want me there. But the day before a vigil hosted by Jared's widow at Celebration Park, Shanna was photographed at the park with her kids by the tabloid Daily Mail. Talk about a violation of privacy, because my kids know that they were photographed and they were worried. The tabloid presented the facts in a way that leave room for speculation about Shanna having a role in Jared's death, citing their rocky divorce papers and her absence from the funeral. Even though we didn't always get along, he was still the father of my kids. So I asked Shanna the question. Did you have anything to do with Jared's murder? No. I did not have anything to do with his murder. Shanna says she has no idea if the murder was targeted or what Jared was involved in, saying they ran in different circles. But Action News Jax reported in June, Shanna had hired criminal defense attorney Hank Cox. He was referred to me by several friends and ultimately my kids' images and videos were being used in the media without consent. Shanna said Cox was hired to protect her kids. I asked her if she thinks she will face criminal charges. She says no, that she's cooperated with detectives. Do you have any idea who might have done this? I do not have any idea. I 
As I said, we've been divorced. We don't run in the same social circles. I, all I know is that I would never want anybody to go through this. She told me if she could speak to Jared again, she'd say one thing. Honestly, that I wish it weren't like this. I wish things could, could have been and could be different. And Shanna told me despite this happening in her neighborhood, despite many people around her discussing the case, she has no intention of leaving Jack's Beach or Jacksonville. guys um <clears throat> so i went ahead and obtained um henry Tienan's stuff um let's just say he has his rap sheet is whoo um when I printed it out, it's 70 pages. Okay. Um, but it's, it's a lot to do with traffic stuff, um, with a vehicle. And actually this is how this all played out. Um, in 2022, he was, they were looking for that blue truck or whatever. Um, and what I like that the police did is, they kept this really close to their chest. They didn't go out there and ask the public uh, and tell the public stuff that wasn't true. Um, they, you know, kept everything to themselves. Um, and there was a couple of things that they did ask for help with was something about the tire. Um, and then also they were looking for a F-150, a blue truck. It was very minimal um, surveillance over there. So I'm going to show you guys a couple more clips of just stuff throughout that has happened. Um, because after the arrest of Tenen, his, Jared's wife broke her silence and the brother. And they did like an interview. And they were asking them like, well, do you even know who this person is? Um, so I think it was, you know, I'm, I'm going to play that. But it, it all stemmed from Tenen getting pulled over, arrested in August of 2022 because of a traffic, you know, um, here, exactly what it is. It was unlawful speed on 818, possession of a firearm, weapon, or ammunition by a convicted felon. So in this vehicle, when this happened, there was, um, he was driving while license suspended or revoked. Um, on 8-13, 2022, accident leaving the scene, property damage, unattended vehicle. Okay. That was on 8-13, 2022. And then on 8-18, he there was uh unlawful speed possession of firearm weapon or ammunition by a convicted felon him and driving while license was suspended or revoked but that was five days after um leaving the scene of an accident um now again it's a very very long list uh, to print it all out, it was 70 pages. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Um, so.
so that's kind of how all that started. Cause when they had arrested him, this Tenen guy, they asked him some questions to do with um, Jared. And my guess is, cause they have not come out and say this again. So I'd be speculating is that I'm very curious to know what vehicle it was. Um, you know, what type of gun was used to kill Jared? Did he have this type of gun? Was the bullets? Stuff like that. Because remember, this was all like taken in and when you have an open case. and But here, there's no connection of this guy, you know, to Jared until um, you get to the where the guy lived. And I'm going to let this little clip um, play it for us. So hold on one second. Since an arrest was announced in her husband's murder. I have felt since the beginning that this was planned, this was thought out, and this was specific to Jared. And Bridegan's brother, Adam, reveals Jared had a haunting fear before he was gunned down. I won't get into specifics, but I, I did have several conversations with Jared where he did express concerns that something like this could happen to him. The man now held in Bridegan's murder made his first appearance in court today on a list of charges. That arrest is giving the family of Jared Bridegan hope, but they say this is not over yet. Investigators say Henry Tennant did not act alone and that the murder was a targeted ambush. They believe someone placed this tire in the road and when Bridegan got out of his SUV to move it, he was shot to death. Tarek, we'll have more in a moment on Tenen's court appearance. We begin, though, with news for Jack's I team investigator, Vic Michalucci, who sat down with Bridegan's widow and brother about this new development in the case. A beloved father of four, Jared Bridegan meant the world to his family, loved ones who have not given up hope, even after nearly a year without answers. There are times here and there that I was concerned. Um, I reach out to law enforcement and just say, is there anything you can tell me. And, you know, they reassure me, hey, we're working diligently. Like, we are not forgetting Jared. Bridegan's widow, Kirsten, and his older brother, Adam, telling us today for the first time. Thank you for being here today. They have some sort of an answer after learning someone's been arrested for murder in connection with the case. 61-year-old Henry Tenen behind bars. A uh, step in the right direction. Huge step. Had either of you ever heard of Henry Tenen? before he came up in the investigation. Never in our lives. I have no, I, no idea who this individual is. But the News for Jack's I team uncovered property records linking Tenen to Mario Fernandez. He's married to Bridegan's ex-wife, Shayna Gardner. For okay, so then I went ahead and took and, and just looked, you know, just double check everybody's work. And um, because normally if you, if you rent from somebody um, and you actually fill out the paperwork the right way, um, and you're getting mail at a house that they own and you rent, you're going to have, um, you're going to be considered associates uh, on a lot of, when you're doing a lot of background checks on, on people, uh, people, it'll come up that you're an associate of this person. And I'm curious to know, um, if when he was doing this Tina guy, cause he's obviously, I mean, he's a felon, um, if he was renting this through actually his name and did he actually go through the process of filling all that out? Cause I'm, I'm just curious cause that address that he and the guy have the same address because he's renting to him, which is the husband of the ex-wife of Jared. Um, they aren't technically linked via being associates, but their addresses are linked. So just um, also between the month um, there was 35 phone calls in the month of uh, February and then the month after. So it was like a total of 70 phone calls between the ex-wife's man and Jared um, and, and the guy that killed Jared rather. Uh, there was also three checks that was written, um, but it all stemmed from this guy getting pulled over on that um, August, 13, uh, you know, August 13th and August 18th. 
Yeah, there was three checks. Uh, that is that was redacted, um, the amount of the three checks right now. Um, but the the papers that I obtained, it's about. It says that Tienan conspired with human beings, as in plural. So it wasn't just human being. Um, so this arrest of him is not going to be the only arrest, in my opinion. Um, I don't think that they would have put the paperwork like that. And I will show you guys that paperwork, which was the arrest and the counts when he was arraigned. But I'll let this continue, and then we'll come back to that. Fernandez. At the time of the shooting, Tenen rented a room in the home that Fernandez owned. What do you think about that connection between Henry Tenen and Jared's ex-wife's husband? I mean, it's scary, right? It's, it's frightening, frankly, that there is a connection and that there is this mass conspiracy. It, it does not help us sleep at night. Shanna and Mario Fernandez have not been charged, nor have they been publicly named as suspects. Shana has said she has nothing to do with the ambush murder on this dark stretch of road in Jacksonville Beach. It happened just minutes after Bridegan dropped the two children he shared with her off at her home. As I learned more details of what happened to Jared, you know, that there's a tire, um, it was pretty clear that someone knew his route, his schedule. I have felt since the beginning that this was planned, this was thought out, and this was specific to Jared. So I am not surprised that they announced that Henry Tenen, someone that we have never heard of, that Jared did not know, wasn't alone in this. Loved ones hoping he opens up to detectives and gives up information about who else is involved. Bridegan's brother today with something we had not heard before, something startling. I did have several conversations with Jared where he did express concerns that something like this could happen to him. That he could be murdered. I won't go into specific details into that, but he did have concerns on his life. The past 11 months have been so incredibly painful for this family, grieving a great loss while living in fear is now three-year-old daughter Bexley, who was in the SUV at the time of the shooting, has so many questions. How is Bexley? How's she doing? Yeah, you know, early on, she talked a lot about the sounds of the gunshots. She even said, that she, you know, daddy on the ground, which makes me believe she saw him there when she was removed from the vehicle. And I'm just so grateful that now the conversations, when she has them with me, are more about dads in heaven Kirsten and Adam thankful for all the support they've gotten, not just from the community, from around the world. Now they need those who know exactly what happened to come clean. My message is that we're still here. It's almost been a year. We're not going anywhere. If you are not going to help and be complicit, you will be found and you will be held accountable. So now is your chance to try to make it right. They have a long way to go for justice for Jared. Vic Michelucci, Channel 4, the local station. Thank you, Vic. Also today, the man charged with killing Bridegan, Henry Tenen, made his first appearance in court. Tarek is joining us now with how that hearing went. Tarek? Well, you know, today's court appearance for Henry Tenen was brief. A judge said no bond for him. He's been in jail since August on an unrelated charge. Tenen is charged with second-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, accessory after the fact, and child abuse. Now, the child abuse stems from Jared Bridegan's then two-year-old daughter being feet away from her dad when he was gunned down. Tenen will be back in court next week on the unrelated charge of driving without a license. He has pleaded guilty to that. Tenen rented this home in Northwest Jacksonville, and the News Projects IT learned of a connection to this home in Bridegan. This is Bridegan's ex-wife, Shauna Gardner Fernandez, and her current husband, Mario Fernandez. Mario owned that home in Northwest Jacksonville, and Henry Tenen rented from him. Fernandez sold the home late last year. Jared Bridegan, as we said, was murdered in Jacksonville Beach just minutes after dropping. Also, um, Tenen moved out of the home the same month of the murder in February. He moved out of that home that he was renting a room. Um, so, yes, there were, um, you heard there at the end, 
uh, that he has been in jail since August on an unrelated. It's unrelated, but that's how all of this started. That when he was arrested, this Tenon guy was arrested for um, that hit and run accident. Um, so now I believe that there is going to be another arrest. Um, his ex-wife has since moved to Washington state. Um, that's where her family was. And that's why at the end of the video, I said that, well, that's not the truth. She said she would never going to move from Jackson. She moved. She is in um, Washington state right now. So I think there's might be issues with that, but I think that she is uh, probably going to be arrested here uh, soon. Um, now, they were very, very smart the way that they did these charges. That's why I was actually covering the case. Let me go ahead and share my screen of, let's see, stop this. Oopsies. Testing. Oh, God, it's going to have an echo. Now, and sorry, she's 